All right, folks, it's Fast Action, back in action here. We are jumping into Chapter 5. It's going to cover exponentials and logarithms, but before we can get to that, we need to do some introductions and review of inverses because our exponentials and our logarithms will be inverses of each other. So we're going to start our foundation there so that we can get to those final topics at the end of the chapter. All right, you're probably going to want to pause this video a couple times and fill in the things that I've already filled in, but I'm going to reference these various definitions that I've given and uh, work through the examples that are below them. So what we're gonna do is we're going to look at the idea of relations, functions, and whether or not they're one-to-one -one, and finding appropriate inverses. We're going to look at these related to graphs, mappings, and on the next page, we're going to look at it with ordered pairs. Much of this page of notes is going to look familiar from the beginning of the year when we introduced and reviewed the idea of just functions and relations, and now we're going to extend it a little bit more. So let's jump into our first um, graph that we have here under example one, and let's look at our various definitions. So the first thing that we would want to ask is whether or not this graph right here is a function. In order to determine if it's a function, we're going to ask ourselves whether or not it passes our vertical line test. Well, we're pretty familiar with that, and we can see that as we drag or we imagine these vertical lines going through, that our vertical lines are intersecting our graph in more than one place. So our answer on this one, is it a function, is no. Now, the next thing that we could look at is whether or not this is one-to-one. -one. And in order for it to be one-to-one, -one, we would need it to pass a horizontal line test. So this is not going to be one-to-one, -one, but more importantly, we really don't even need to consider our question of one-to-one -one simply based on the fact that it wasn't a function at all. So if it's not a function, we really don't even need to answer this question. So we can actually just put an NA on this one because we don't even need to consider it. Furthermore, we don't need to think about sketching an inverse because it also isn't a function. So we can also just put um, an NA on that one as well. So that went pretty quickly. Let's jump into our next picture, figuring out if this one is a function. So first we're gonna do is we're gonna look at our vertical line test and we can see that, oh yes, this is passing our vertical line test. So we can say yes. Now, since it passed, I have no idea why I put that T on there. Since it passed our vertical line test, we can then extend our conversation to the idea of one-to-one, -one, and we can look to see whether or not it passes a horizontal line test. Same exact idea, but a horizontal line. So as we look at our horizontal lines, do our horizontal lines intersect our graph in more than one place? And the answer is yes. So this graph fails the horizontal line test, so we are going to say no, this function is not one-to-one. -one. Now, since it is a function, we can actually also sketch its inverse. So we can sketch the inverse of this, and when we sketch the inverse, what we're going to do is we're going to reverse the x and the y coordinates on all of the ordered pairs. So I want you to pause the video and I want you to fill in the ordered pairs for each of these nice key values here. Pause the video, sketch those in, and then we'll continue actually doing our inverse. All right, so I've got my ordered pairs sketched in. Let's make sure that these match yours. I have negative five, zero, negative three, five, two, five, five, negative four, and seven, negative two. Now, in order to sketch our inverse of this graph, what we're going to do is, yes, we're just going to reverse the x and the y coordinates, but effectively what we're doing is we're reflecting the graph over the identity line. Some people are good at doing this just visually. I am not, so I always write out my ordered pairs. So let's go ahead and sketch in our identity line. Remember, that's our line y equals x, and it's the one that just goes nicely along and kind of divi just divides up our coordinate plane. Kind of did mine a little bit 
messy here so I can kind of clean that up a little bit. If I had a ruler, I would draw that in there. Okay, so now let's start reversing these ordered pairs and seeing what happens. All right, I like to work from left to right. So instead of graphing the point negative five, zero, I'm going to plot the point zero, negative five. So I'm gonna get that first point on here, zero, negative five. Then I'm gonna reverse the next point. I'm just tracing this along. Now I'm gonna point plot the point five, negative three. So I've got the point five and I'm gonna do negative three. So now I get this point right here. Next, now what I like to do is I like to actually draw this in as I go. It's gonna make it a little bit easier to see. Then I'm going to plot the point five, two, just reversing this ordered pair. So now I'm gonna plot the point five, two, over five, up two. And I'm gonna draw in that segment. Next, I'm going to plot the point four, negative four, five. So I've got negative four up five. And I'm going to draw in that next segment. And lastly, I'm going to point, plot the point negative two, seven. I'm going to go negative two up seven. And now I have the last point. So we can see that each of the various segments is reflected over this line. So this segment became this segment, and this segment became this segment. This one that crosses is a little harder to see, but then this one became this one. All right, let's go to our last graph. Okay, let's take a look. Does our last graph pass the vertical line test? And the answer is, of course, yes. We certainly recognize this graph as our cubic function. Okay, is it one-to-one? -one? So we're gonna check the horizontal line test. And our answer is, of course, yes. And then we can sketch the inverse since it's a function. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do our inverse. This one's gonna be a little bit easier to do. Let's sketch in our identity line. I always like to have that identity line in there because it really makes that inverse uh, pop out a little bit better for us. So let's go ahead and plot our points. I like to see, we can see that the zero, zero is gonna stay the same. Of course, the one and the one, one and the negative one, negative one will stay the same. So we can then just kind of approximate these other points. We could certainly find them algebraically if we wanted. So I have this point, 1.8 comma five. So instead I'm gonna go five and I'm gonna go up about 1.8. And then of course I have a negative 1.8, negative five. I can flip that one around. Now I've got my points. Now what I want you to realize is that as we're sketching this in, we really didn't need to do these ordered pairs because what we know, the opposite of the cubic function would be the cube root. But it's nice to go through this process to actually see. Sure enough, they do create those nice reflections. So we would have expected those to be inverses, and that's exactly what we got. All right, moving down here to the bottom, let's look at mappings. This one's going to go much faster for us. Again, you might want to pause the video and fill in our definitions and explanations for the function one-to-one -one and inverse of our mappings. All right, let's take a look. We're gonna go through this in a little different order. On this one, we're gonna look at just determining our function for each one first. So which ones would be functions? We wanna figure out which of our mappings do, does each x value point to only one y? In other words, we're looking for places where we have a, a split on the x values um, instead of them individually pointing. So on this first one, everything looks great. So yes, we are good to go on our first one. On our next one, we can see that everything is looking good there. And then when we get to our last one, we this one's gonna fail. And what I say is I'm looking for a split and what I'm looking for is this problem. This is how I know that this fails 
my um, test for my mapping function. So this one is a no. And just like we saw on the next, on the previous problem, we don't need to consider whether it's one to one. And we then don't need to think about how we would do the inverse as soon as it fails. All right, so let's, can, let's go on back. Let's start looking for our one to one idea. Now, this one, we want each of the y's to point to only one x. Well, since the arrows aren't going in that direction yet, we're going to instead think about it as um, each of them um, are, it's only going to receive one x. So we're going to imagine our arrows going in the other direction. So let's take a look here. Um, All right, so what we can look at on this one is we can look at the x side and we can, or the right side of the mapping, and we can look to see whether or not we have multiple arrows pointing at the same um, x or y value here. So we've got here, I only have one arrow, I have one arrow, I have one arrow, and I have one arrow. So this one all looks fine, so we can say yes. Now, when we look at our next one, what we can see is right here. Both of those arrows are pointing to that Y value. And when we reverse this around, this will make sense here in a moment. And I have multiples there and I have multiples there. So all of those are causing problems for us. So we would say that this second mapping is not one-to-one. -one. Now, the last thing that we can do is for our two mappings that were inverses, we can go ahead and we can actually, our, our two mappings that were functions, we can show each of those inverses. And all we have to do on those is simply reverse the arrows. So instead of the arrows going this direction, we're going to flip them around and we're gonna make them all go the other direction. So all we have to do is just put arrows. We just put arrows on these opposite ends. So it effectively reversed our X's and Y's for us. Now, when we do this, particularly on our um, ones that were one-to-one -one and not one-to-one -one here, let's take a look at our definitions one more time on that. So our definition said was each Y only points to one X. So now we're looking at these and we can see that, oh yeah, these are only pointing to our new, so our, to our x values. So our y's point to an x, this y points to an x, and this y points to an x. Versus over here, I can see that this y is pointing to two different x values now. So it's a little easier to understand these definitions once we have that inverse in there. All right, on the next page, we're going to look at our final way of analyzing whether something's a function, and we're, then we're gonna jump into algebraically finding inverses.